Welcome to the Fighting on Film podcast, the podcast all about classic and obscure war movies, from the Normandy landings to the days of chivalry and swords. If it's been captured on film, we're going to try and cover it. I'm Robbie of RM Military History. I'm Matthew Moss of Historical Firearms and the Armourer's Bench. Hello there, sorry to interrupt. I wanted to let you know that you can now join our supporting cast over on Patreon. As thanks for your support, you'll be able to help us pick films, submit questions for guests, have first pick on brand new and exclusive merch, and much more. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Hello, welcome back to Fighting on Film. Now, after last week's 150th um, celebration episode, we reviewed The Guns and Averon. We're uh, coming right up to date this week with uh, The Great Escaper, the new Michael Caine movie. Um, about Bernie Jordan and his um, great escape over the channel um, for the 70th anniversary um, D-Day uh, commemorations. And a big thanks to Pafe for an advanced screening of the movie. Um, thanks very much. Um, we love uh, reviewing new movies for you at uh, fight on Fighting on Film. And if you want to go and see this one, it's in cinemas on October the 6th. So if you're listening at the de- on the date of release, that's two days. So make your plans, book your tickets, get your popcorn. And go and have a watch. So this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to do the alley tally. We're not going to do favourite scenes as per se. Um, we're going to have more of a sort of loose chat about the movie. And then we'll move into spoiler territory. Not that there's any real hard spoilers in this one. It's not that kind of film. But we don't want to ruin it for you. So there will be a definite marker when the spoilers come. So when you hear the Al Murray eye dent, if you know what that sounds like, you'll know the spoilers are coming. The uh, the, the klaxon. The spoiler klaxon, klaxon. yeah. So before we begin this episode um, and our chatting about the movie, um, we asked you guys over on Twitter um, at Fighting on Film. Uh, please do follow us if you haven't before. What are some of your favourite Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson films? So we had Ian McLennan went with The Eagle Has Landed and Mary Queen of Scots. Our very own uh, Matthew Moss historical firearms went with The Ipcrest File and Hedda. Uh, Simon it's, Massey it's goes. Hard. It's hard picking. I know. I know it's like the, the Kane and Glenda Jackson have had such illustrious careers. It's so difficult. Both two-time Oscar winners. Come on. Exactly. I mean, these are heavyweights, absolute heavyweights. And that's something about the film we'll talk about in a minute. The casting. Then we had Simon Massey who goes with Kane, you know, Zulu, the man who would be king, uh, Bridge Too Far, uh, Hill in Korea. Um, Kane's such a legend, and he said he's looking forward to watching it. Uh, Kevin Getz goes with. Uh, Kane in A Bridge Too Far, and Glenda Jackson for her appearance on The Muppet Show, which I liked. It's so interesting. So it, throughout all of these, like American listeners uh, have gone with like their appearances on The Muppet Show, and then a lot of UK listeners have gone with the the classic Morecambe and Weiss sketch on the Christmas show she did. Yes. Um, which is yeah. is great, actually. It's very good. So, And speaking of uh, the, the uh, Morecambe and Weiss sketch there, uh, Bedford Enthusiast Club uh, goes with the Italian job for Kane and for Glenda Jackson, Cleopatra, Ernie Wise adaptation. Quite a few. There's quite a few. Yeah. Barry Grogan goes with uh, Alfie or Palmer. Um, I went with uh, Get Carter. You know, can't go wrong with <laughs> Get Carter. What a what a great noir film. Um, Sophisticats Review goes with Ipcrest File for Kane and Morecambe and Wise for Glenda Jackson. Uh, Stephen Maru- M- Maturin goes with Bridge Too Far and King Lear and Richard Bruce, uh, Richard Bruce this week will round it out with Zulu for Kane. Isn't it? Kane and Jackson, what can you say? Like two, you know, as I said, heavyweights, powerhouses of their day. You know, Kane's 90, Jackson was 89 at the time of recording. And, yeah, you know, I think uh, probably going to cast Matt, we might as well, we're talking about them. Um, but apparently Kane is going to retire after this one. Um, he, he said that at the premiere, didn't he? Um, he did, yeah. Um, he said, said that he, I'm yeah, old, he's my... struggling to walk. That's it. Yeah, he was at, on, at a wheelchair at the uh, press um, release screening um, that we couldn't make, unfortunately. It would have been lovely to uh, have seen him in the flesh. Yeah, we it, we were offered uh, an invite, weren't we? But, yeah. Um, yeah. Timing so and everything there, else. You, you know, know what it's like. With, within the same day. Mm. So in terms of cast, um, we've got Michael Caine um, playing Benny Jordan. And just to round out, Michael Caine's copious, you know, war movie. You could, um, a, you could do an entire episode on Caine, couldn't you? Really? Oh, I'm sure we will eventually when we start doing actor profiles and stuff like that. Hill in Korea, the Steel Bayonet, apparently. 
um, Carbonane with Pride, Foxhole in Cairo, um, Zulu, Ipcrest Wild, Play Dirty, Battle of Britain, Too Late the Hero, Last Valley, uh, The Man Who Will Be King, The Eagle Has Landed, A Bridge Too Far, Escape to Victory, and that cameo recently in uh, 2017's Dunkirk. There, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a co-billing really, isn't it, between it is. Kane and Jackson? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a strong cast. There's the 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 supporting cast are great too. But mm. uh, in terms of Jackson, you know, notable roles: um, Mary Queen of Scots, uh, Women in Love, Bequest to the Nation, A Touch of Class, um, Hedda. Just she she had an incredible career for like three decades, and then went away and became a politician. Yeah, for twenty odd years, and then I think it was twenty. 19 she came back to acting and did mm. a, a few um pieces and then this is this is her last um her last uh motion picture um yeah you know last credit yeah um and she's great in it she is great in it i, I will fantastic say That's, this now yeah. they are both on form in this very much um, so very much so i went i went into it with a little bit of trepid you know trepidation um a, a, around Will will they be able to carry this? Will you know? Will this be as entertaining as you know we'd hope? Um, yes. But I think in terms of you know performances, they Jackson especially like the, some of the scenes that she has with uh, Adele, um, played by Danielle uh, Vitalis, are great. They're really oh, they're lovely, fantastic. and, and yeah. all of the all of the scenes with Kane with them together there's there's a real chemistry you can feel very it. much it's... you can, you think they're married like it's so yeah. nice and it's very natural and yeah as i say it's, it's two people who have you know had a life in entertainment a life in acting on the screen and and everything you've you've known them for and seen them in it's very fitting if it is mm-hmm. kane's last and if it is obviously it was jackson's last unfortunately she passed away before the movie came out um but a couple of weeks before the test the first it, test screening that's it yeah away, sadly if it's you know if it's their last few films so if it's Kane's last hurrah then it's a very fitting end to a undoubtedly one of the most you know packed careers that any actors ever a British oh, yeah. actors ever had you know one of Britain's finest you know screen actors oh without doubt yeah you know you can I, I was watching his acting there's a thing about screen acting that he did in 1987 that I hadn't yeah. seen before and even then you know the the guy is nearly 50 years 40 years into a career there you know he's, mm. he's done more than some actors will ever do in a career even then second oscar um yeah. and it's just the man is just a, a constant professional he, he knows gets acting he understands what he's doing and everything up to this up to this point up to this movie it's just yet again showcasing why kane is so loved and revered you know he might have become mm. a bit of a parody in his later life with all the imitations that we've had over the years and all the sort of Kaneisms that have come out, you know, like blow the bloody doors off. My name's Michael Kane, etc. But I think it's easy to sort of forget the actual person himself, the actor, so consummate and, and Jackson as well. Um, I think it's a, such a nice send off for them, this movie. I agree. And I'm sure we'll talk about that more in a moment. Sure. Um, continuing with cast, we've got Adele. Uh, played by Danielle Vitalis. Um, she made her debut in Attack the Block in 2011. She's been in Horrible Histories and Black Mirror, a number of other TV credits. I was in that, uh, Horrible Histories. You were. You <laughs> weren't in the one in 2019, were you? No, I wasn't. No. Uh, a bit earlier no. than that. They wanted to get the old gang back together, but, you know, my, my rider is just insane. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> then we've got... Um, Victor O'Shin as Scott Selwood, who plays a veteran, an Afghanistan veteran. Yep. Um, he's been in Casualty, the TV series Black Ops. And next year, he's going to be appearing in uh, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Ah, new Shane yeah. Ritchie um, picture. You mean Guy Ritchie? Guy Ritchie, not Shane Ritchie. That's a very different film. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> um, young Ben, he's played by Will Fletcher. Um, he was in a 2021 film called The Road Dance. He was also in the recent uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Rings of Power TV series. And he was also in that period drama on ITV, I think it was, uh, Tom Jones. Then we've got uh, uh, Laura Marcus playing uh, Young Reenie, 
she's been in Silent Witness, uh, Bad Education, and has and uh, also been in Tom Jones. So they, oh, right. they knew each other prior. It's yeah. nice. We had a, a little bit of a standout performance from John Standing as as Arthur, the the RAF officer that very um, good that um, Bernie meets when he gets over to France, and mm. he he plays a, a fairly complex character with with a lot of survivor guilt, and that's a theme that is you know throughout the film, and we'll talk very about cool that in a moment theme as well. To the movie. Yeah. Um, and you'll you'll recognise John Standing from um, also being in. The Eagle has landed with with Kane um, in yeah. 1976 as, as Father Barricker. Um, he was in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy in 79. He was in The Sea Orbs in 1980. Privates on Parade in 83. The Falklands Play in 2002. That's Gathering great, Storm. Yes. Yeah, it was. The Gathering Storm in the same year um, and Beef of Vendetta in uh, 2005. Oh, wow. Is that a, in, that's just cherry picked in, yeah, insane career. Sti- stipulation of Kane that he would do the movie if standing was in it too because they're old friends so and you can yeah, see the chemistry I've seen again that. Yeah, I've seen that it, uh, that, that something will probably come back to you but as we say the casting is very strong because everyone mm. either knows each other or has worked previously so the chemistry is very very good yeah and just to illustrate that to, to round it out we have uh wolf carla as um as heinrich who is uh, playing a yes. german veteran that, that benny encounters um and you know he he was also in the eagle landed in 76 um false ten from navarone the riddle of the sands the lady banishes uh sea wolves again um raiders of the lost ark firefox the keep dirty dozen next mission uh dirty dozen the deadly mission yes Florence, classic, Nightingale. classic films there dirty dozen three and um, four yeah <laughs> <laughs> um an episode or two of soldier soldier uh, uh, band of brothers in 2001 and the lost battalion which is a film that we need to cover um, yeah i love that film great film yeah, and what an interesting, you know, character for him to pop up in. Mm. You know, as playing a German veteran after spending, you know, arguably a career playing German officers in in movies. Yeah. It's it's quite, it's quite fitting, an interesting little nod. Yeah, yeah it's it fitting. definitely fitting. Yes, and that, that so, basically rounds out um, cast. The cast, yeah, as we said, Pat strong cast. Yeah. You couldn't learn better, really, could you? Mm. Um, so for production this week, uh, directed by Oliver Parker, um, you might know him from uh, his working, sorry, you might know him for directing 1995's Othello, any uh, key stage three English literature uh, people out there will know that one. Um, it's a good film. Uh, Johnny English Reborn, uh, the 2014 Dad's Army rebate, remake, we won't hold that against him, it's uh, not the strongest. Um, <laughs> uh, Swimming with Men with Rob Brydon. Um, and Daniel yeah. Mays, that's a very good film, very good, feel good British comedy there. Uh, William Ivory uh, wrote the film. Uh, he wrote Burton and Taylor, Maiden Dagenham, uh, Conum as Muck, Comment as Muck in the 90s. And Ivory said this um, when he first looked at the story It was that classic thing of saying, there's a wonderful incident there, but what is the story? The more I dug into it, the more I started to realize that it's a piece about redemption and forgiveness. It's about humanity in all the shapes and guises. Which I thought was a lovely quote. Um, then we have uh, Christopher Ross, who is the DOP. He previously worked with Parker on the Dad's Army remake uh, and Danny Boyle's Yesterday, that one about the fella wakes up and the Beatles aren't um, around oh, and he yeah. steals their songs. Yeah. <laughs> so it could have been better, that movie, but, you know, it's fine. Um, so it was based off a graphic novel, I think. Um, I and think then, it was. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. Um, because it, yeah, surely... Do you think it was ta- as well? Tangent off a minute. It, if you learn that Oasis and the Beatles had never existed, because I've seen the movie... There ain't no way I'd be like coming out and saying that it wasn't my work. I'd riff off that for my life. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, no, he doesn't. At the end, he like gives all the music away to everyone because he feels like a fraud. But if right. it was me in my greedy little brain, I would be like, <laughs> I'm going to make an Oasis Greatest Hits and Beatles Greatest Hits album and be a billion gajillionaire. Isn't it surreal that there would have been no Oasis without the Beatles? I know, I love it. But that's, in the film, that's why he goes, oh, there must be no Oasis either. And everyone goes, oh, who, who are they? D- did Blair get a mention? I don't know. Wild tangents this week. Um, and um, <laughs> Christopher Ross also directed the... I do the hope Cats. there's an exec at Pathé UK that enjoys this show. <laughs> Thank you, Pathé. We love you, Pathé. And he also um, did the, the director of photography on the Cats film, which was very interesting um, a few years ago, if you remember that one. Yeah. It's a, it's a real shame that we 
we're a war movie podcast because <laughs> reviewing cats will be an experience that's for sure uh, amazing yeah and there's like a war bit of a war bit in that we might be able to fit it in is there then. i've never seen it so i, I mean well i mean it was that said, was a war it, on the i senses, say I'm, i've seen enough of it it was a war on the eyes from the it trailer was. anyway it was. um uh distributed by pathé uh, and BBC Films. Uh, military advisor was Paul Biddis, uh, who's worked on The Crown, 1917. But he's currently has just worked on the Malaysian movie about um, the like the Black Hawk Down kind of uh, what was going on behind the scenes during that operation called Malbat Missy Backer. Um, seen some great behind the scenes stuff on his socials. Um, do check out Paul's um, Instagram. Actually, it's very interesting to see what he's working on. Um, and the upcoming Gladiator Two. Uh, movie and the napoleon film it's coming out on apple tv and i, I contacted paul um we, we did an interview together on a youtube channel a few uh, months ago um and he told me this about working on the movie he said i felt very privileged to have been asked to work on the show and for my research i called up actress vicky mcclure who listeners might know from line of duty and um this is england um to ask her granddad ralph mcclure who was a Royal Navy signaller on a landing craft tank on Sword Beach. So I had first hand account of drills for the scenes. Um, and I think as we talk about the movie in a little bit more depth in a minute, those scenes on the LCT, the flashbacks, are very well done. Very, very yeah, well done. Yeah, they're one um, of the highlights of the film. Yes, and there's some photos that Paul shared with me um, from working on the movie behind the scenes shots that I'll be sharing on the socials um, this week. Um, do look out for those because it... The mock-up of the LCT with the blue screen behind it, what they got, very very good. Um, so uh, the Imperial War Museum helped out, I think, with some of that. And as, as I said, the LCT was mocked up. Uh, filming locations, it was filmed all in the UK because I think it was filmed during COVID. Um, so there was a lot of uh, you know restrictions and things. Uh, so Twickenham, uh, Campus Sands, Dover, and Hastings were principal locations. And then I just got a bit from the lovely press release that uh, Pathé sent us when they sent us a screener. Um, and there's bits about the real story. So I'll read directly from the production notes. Uh, when the 70th D-Day celebrations in Normandy were first publicised, the staff at Bernie's care home had already attempted to get him on the trip with the Royal British Legion. However, they failed to secure him a place. Bernie therefore decided to make his own way there. Bravery over planning, Ivory said of Bernie. In truth, Bernie did not have to escape from their care home because he was free to come and go as he pleased. It was only Rini that required full time care. But it was true that Bernie kept his plan secret from the care home staff because he didn't want anyone to try and stop him. We assume that Bernie would not have disappeared without telling his wife of 59 years, and we assume that she agreed to keep his plan secret for as long as possible. It is also true that Bernie was entirely ignorant of the fact that his escapade had made headlines throughout the world following the police issuing a tweet about him having gone missing. Hashtag the great escaper. He was quite taken back by the Fiore when he got back to England to find reporters besieging his care home. <laughs> I remember Fantastic. it at the time. I, I remember do. it yeah. and being on the news and stuff and it being a, you know, an interesting little footnote to, you know, such an important commemoration. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the film captures that quite nicely, and it then does. goes a little bit further and, and looks at looks into things that you know perhaps would would never have occurred to Bernie, and and you know there's elements of the film that you know probably definitely didn't happen. Yeah, um, but it it, it but builds a very nice narrative all around it. It does, it does, and it serves a purpose. I think. So I think we'll move into spoilers. But before we do, I think I would say that. You know, if you've listened this far, um, I would recommend seeing the film. Yeah, definitely. Please go and find it. Enjoyed the performances. I I thought that, you know, Jackson and, and Kane's performances were, you know, fantastic. And I would I would definitely recommend catching it. I would too. You know, it's not often that, you, you know, in this current, the way that cinema currently is, you know, you don't, off, you don't get a film that is, you know, uh, top billing is too people in their late 80s early 90s no that's very um, true too so just just from that it's it's quite something um and the story that they weave and that the, the ivory's written is well worth your time um and you know go and support your local cinema because god knows they need it hello i'm al murray and you're listening to fighting on film the world's number one war film podcast if you've listened this far if you're not going to go and see it in the cinema or you just want to hear our thoughts the, the sword beach flashbacks are incredibly strong and i could have watched a movie of those alone um yeah 
they are so well done. The you see the LCT inside of it, and Bernie talking to the the chap who's asking him about what's it like, and Bernie says it's a piece of piss. You'll be fine. You know, he's getting all worried about going onto the beach in the tank in the Sherman, and then he's like it's a piece of piss. Hands him a uh, uh, player's navy cut tin with his wife's, um, sorry, his girlfriend's picture. And it's like, look, there's a note on, there's an address on the back. Let, let her know how I get on type thing. Write to her for me. And that's Bernie's internal struggle. It's coming to terms with what happened to him on the LCT. Um, and you see it in chunks. Doesn't ever really hang on it very long. But the bits that you get are so well done. And, and seeing the beach from the from the ferry, when Bernie's on the ferry going over, and him looking, and then he flashes in his head to seeing Sword Beach as it was. Very powerful. You know, yeah. I've I've chatted yes. to friends who I know who are veterans and have do have flashbacks um to, to things that happened to them in Helmand and, and Afghanistan and things like that. Um and they say it is flashes. It's it's little little triggers, little moments that just get in your head just a little bit, almost like a bit of a dream thing. You just kind of flash there, flashback. Um so I thought that was very well done. Were very well done. I agree, and it it, it breaks the film up nicely. So essentially, yes. you you follow Bernie as he travels to um, Normandy. You follow Bernie um, and their interactions with Adele and the other members of staff at the care home that, that they live in. Mm. And then we flash back to young Bernie and young uh, Rini just before the invasion, and then. Um, there's those great sequences on the actual LCT. And it's important to like try to explain there's the elements of, of survivor guilt that we talked about um earlier in the show are threefold. So yes. we have um Scott O'Shin, uh, sorry, um so we have Victor O'Shin who plays Scott, who's an Afghan veteran, and mm-hmm. he has a little bit of survivor guilt um because he came back. Um yeah. uh it, it it goes into a little bit more depth and detail, but yeah, and know, he's he, clearly he, suffering himself. He is, yeah, he's hurting, and he's using alcohol as a crux. Um, and then we've got um, Arthur, Bernie's friend, who is a uh, former bomber pilot. Mm. I think he flew Halifax. Did he say? He said he flew. He, he towed a glider over for those chaps. Yeah, um, and then he went back, he and he then Khan. he bombed Khan. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um. It doesn't, I give it that, and he, sorry to, to jump in, but I like the fact that the movie didn't shy away from what happened to Khan because it could have easily yeah. just gone, oh, well, Khan was bombed, like it was nothing, but they they really went into how much Khan was bombed. And Yes, yeah, so I, I think he says, it, you know, he le- it was levelled. Yeah, um, yeah. It didn't shy away from it being controversial. Somewhere. No, it didn't. Because I know it, it was and still is. Yeah, he feels guilt, um, not only for... for you know, the bombing of Khan, but also for the fact that his brother, who had been uh, shot down mm. months before, was in Khan when it was bombed and was killed yes. in Khan. Um, and he's never been back to Normandy in person to his brother's grave. And he has that, you know, deep sense of guilt. And he he's leaned on alcohol his entire life. Yeah. Um, and he's an alcoholic. There's a there's a great scene where John Stanning throws up. Um uh, it's very after, funny. after um, it is, it's ha- it's, it's well like tra- handled. It's really tragedy nice comedy that sequence, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and then there's the much more complex survivor guilt of Bernie and Rini. Um, and then I I didn't actually mention the the actor's name earlier in uh, in cast. It's Elliot Norman uh, who plays Douglas um, Bennett. Yes. And uh, he shows um, Bernie a photograph of his of his girlfriend, and then Bernie subsequently sees. Um, Douglas's Sherman get hit by anti tank fire or artillery yeah. fire, uh, and it it brews up on the beach. Um, and Bernie watches through a pair of field glasses, and he sees um Douglas struggling to get out of the tank, and then subsequently, you know, dying. Hit and again. he carries that survivor yeah. guilt um, mm. all the way through to the present day. Um, and it, 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 there's a nice payoff of of that when he he visits him, you know, the cemetery, um, yes. along with Arthur, who visits his brother, uh, mm. and that's a scene that probably we both have thoughts on. I think 
Yeah, like I I love that scene because they're finally in a place where they can start reflecting and trying to work through it, you know, having held, held it for 70 years. Mm. Um, but I, it's maybe it's just the way the film was. It was very quickly cut between nursing home, Bernie, Reenie and Bernie. It was about Reenie and Bernie, obviously. It's about their relationship, their life together. But the scene with Arthur and Bernie in the cemetery at Bayer, I just... I wanted them to hang on that a little bit longer mm-hmm. because it was yeah. welling something inside of me. You know, the room was getting a bit dusty. The eyes were getting a bit watery, must admit. Um, I mean, Kane in that scene is fantastic and he gives it his all. Um, and it's just, you know, you know, it's the, it's a, it's not only, you know, dialogue, but it's also the physical acting that he brings to that. Yes. And he, he brings a, a, a depth and a pathos to it that, mm. you know, at 90, Mm. you can you, you can bring you can to a do. Role. yeah exactly um, but it, didn't, it just didn't hang a very touching enough. scene but it just moves away so quickly from it, it i just it, wanted him to yeah. linger or to say something more um but then maybe that's enough even worse it? with john uh, with john standing's character arthur the there's the you don't see him that after that, scene really, of, do you? That, that scene of him finding his brother's grave is so short for the lead up that it gets mm. because he talks about the you know the, the guilt of bombing Khan. He talks about his alcoholism and that he's always been that way and he's never been able to get away from it. And he's a coward for not going to see his brother's grave in France. Um and he's you know he's he's coming to the end of his life and he knows it and he, he felt this was the last chance he would have to to go and mm. visit his brother's grave. And the way that that scene is given, just by that you know previous scene of him explaining that story, yeah, you think, oh, there's going to be a quite a moving scene when he does find his brother's yeah. grave. But it's it's. Uh, the, it, but then maybe that's uh, that is one of my few criticisms of the film. Yeah. That I would have liked a little bit more. But then reflecting in both of those on it, parts of that scene, reflecting on it, I think maybe because the movie rattles through. It's an hour and a half, but it's very well paced. I'll give it that. Mm, it is. Um, Perhaps they just didn't want to hang on it too much. Maybe there's a there's a stylistic or a, a writing, uh, you know, technique or something where you don't hang on it. Because I, I could get why Maybe. some some could and some don't. Maybe it's just the way this one was written, the way this one was done. I can get why they cut away, but me personally, I'd yeah. love to have hung on it a little bit more. Well, so but, would I, because, you know, it's, it's the crux of the film. It is about yes. that guilt um you know, just and the setup get, for it had been such that you're like oh yeah but then you do get the lovely scene at the end where and i think it's the strongest one of the strongest moments where bernie finally comes home and he's gone through the the yeah, media and tells, foray and the and he tells really all about douglas and he finally tells yeah. her about it and he's feeling all you know survivory guilt as we said yeah. and how it's not fair and it, how says, he feels um uh, she talks about um, when he, you know, came back. He had this weight that he never talked about, and she mm. kept waiting for him to talk about it, and he never did. Yeah, and it's the guilt of him saying that he'd be okay. It was a piece of piss. He'd be perfectly yeah. fine. Um, and then, you know, moments later, he his tank gets brewed up. Um, but then it's how Rini comforts him. It's them as their relationship, and Jackson and Kane's chemistry in this, this scene. It really got to me um, mm. of how you. It's the bad luck and the good luck speech that that Jackson gives is so strong and so poignant. I think to everyone, and no matter what you've gone through in anything, I think everyone can take something from this. Is that you know you've got to keep on trucking. Essentially, that's kind of what I got from it. Um, and Bernie has, and they both have. And then you, then the ending of the film is almost kind of how it starts, where it's just them and their relationship, and them having been on the beach and having these lovely moments together, Bernie getting his own back on the bicyclist that cuts in yeah. for him at the start of the movie, cuts in and he's trying to get a cup of tea on the beach. And it kind of just ends with them just being together. And I think a cynic could be like, oh, it's cutesy. Oh, kind of how life is. You know, you're with someone... Yeah, you, small you, moments. You, small moments, yeah. Rini, you know, says that, you know, we're, we're, we're simple, ordinary people and we've lived, you know, 
Well, they were. They were both mayor. Peppers. I know. They were mayor of Hove. Mayor and mayoress of, of yeah. Hove, yeah. So they lived, they lived a really um, a you life. Know, full life of, um, you know, a lot of public service. I think he was a councillor and stuff before he became mm-hmm. mayor. And, and, um, yeah. But she she says like we lived a simple life and but that that doesn't matter because we lived every moment of it and that's a nice yeah. that's a that's a that's a good thing to take away from it, that scene. It is, I think it really really um, is. And as we've said, like those scenes with with Kane and Jackson are you know the best parts of the film. Yeah. But there's some other interesting stuff that I wanted to touch on. Um, sure. There's the scene with um, with the the German veterans who are in the pub. That's very encounter. Powerful. Um, mm. Bernie and Arthur, and in the production notes that we we mentioned earlier, um, it said it notes that Kane turned the script down at first, um, because he you know he, he felt like he'd run his course and he'd retired almost at that point, um, and then he he thought about it again, and that scene with the the, the group of German soldiers was one that he kept coming back to, yeah, um, where they share a moment of mutual understanding. Um, That's and really he found nice. particularly moving, mm. um, and that that kind of convinced him to take on the part. And mm. and again, I as you said, Elliot, it's not every day that someone of his age gets to be no. you know, in a leading role again. Yeah, exactly. And and that seems lovely because it because from the trailer, I was worried that we were going to get this something different than what we got. I, you can never really judge a film from its trailer, yeah. but I was like, oh, is it going to be a uh, what's it going to be? But then that scene is very well done, yeah, and. Bernie realizes that he needs to go and help Arthur essentially to, to, to help Arthur with the go, go into yeah. Bayern cemetery. And they, he talks to the German veterans and it's through a translator, an American translator is there. And he gives he gives him his ticket to the, the commemoration saying, You should be there too. And I like that. And it could have you could have gone, and I like the how the film didn't hammer any messages or try and be heavy handed in its reflecting of the past. It, these are just old men reflecting on a life lived rather than going into the nuts and bolts of the wires and the who's and all oh, you, you know, you're in the Vermax. So what does this mean about your character? Yada, yada, yada. Like last week, how we mentioned about the good German myth, this mm. movie isn't, isn't going to delve into that because it's not about that. And I like how the ivory, the, the, the screenwriter didn't force in anything else to sort of pull you away and pull you out of the, uh, Bernie's journey because that's all it is and the themes of acceptance and reflection are very very strong mm, and I think mm. that's why I really did like it I enjoyed it there's a few bits for me that don't as we said cutting away from certain sequences very quickly it's annoying um that was my then, main critique I think main, yeah and there's some harsh grading at certain points mm. but that's yeah. just me I mean it you know other people might not even notice it but I remember, I remember being a bit like oh it's a bit bit of a strong lighting there on that sequence yeah. or something but i mean it might look better on on a big screen or that yeah on it a, might actually because we I watched it on our laptops because of the screener <laughs> yeah exactly um in terms of you know the, the supporting cast i thought the the uh the casting of the the young greenian and oh, um fantastic and he yeah. was was really good and just to mention from but I happily had a whole lot more of yeah it. i agree i they could have slipped a little bit more in there, you know, they're introduced in like a little swing dance sequence, whether like a, a local dance. And then there's a really beautiful touchy moment where um, Bernie takes um, Rini to see the, you know, um, the, uh, the, the golden hour, the holy hour, I think it was. Holy hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they um, you know, about four in the morning and they hark back to that, at the end of the film where they, they're hand in hand looking out the window watching. Yeah. And that's why the sunrise uh, that's over why, the sea, which is lovely. Why Rini gets up so early so she can watch it all the time. Yeah, because it's implied that they first yeah. made love during that's that hour in yeah. the in the in the woods. It's lovely, and I, I think that's lovely as well. That you know, it, it's the little things, as you said. It's that that's what's important, like in a mm-hmm. relationship and life. When you get to that age, you you clinging on to and holding Absolutely. the things. I, 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 it, it's interesting because. Um, in the in the production notes, um, Parker mentions that it was a little bit difficult casting people for that role. Yeah. Um, because he, he encountered like a lot of actors that were essentially doing either knowingly or unknowingly doing almost imitations of of Kane, especially yeah, in Jack. That's not what that's not um, what you're doing. You're meant to be doing Bernie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then when he found Fletcher and, and Marcus, 
he found actors that had that same sort of spirit rather than doing an imitation. That's what he says mm. in the production notes. Um, so they didn't imitate the actors' mannerisms, etc. It was more of a capturing the you know the spirit. And one of the things about Jackson's performance is her spirit is indomitable, like throughout the whole film. Oh yeah, she she has such a presence. It it's portrayed. Re- I've you know we've all met elderly people that are like that. Um, they have yeah. this real presence in the room. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it 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 just came across really well on screen. It was mm. a bit of a, genuine, a bit of a masterclass it's, in terms of it's genuine. That's what it is. Like I sometimes feel like, like that, I think that's just Jack. It's just Glenda Jackson it's chatting. Mm. That's not Reenie. Yeah. That's Glenda Jackson. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not Glenda Jackson. It's Reenie. She embodies that role, and and then Kane and Kane embodies Jordan. Um, I know we've already talked about it, but the LCT scenes, um, I thought they really brought a bang to the book because yeah, you no, know it's hard pressed. There isn't the budget to make big war movies in this country at the moment, but but it's fascinating that we finally get a depiction of the British Sword Beach of on a day on Sword yeah. Beach, yeah, and it's such a small little encapsulation within a much larger film it's, it's a, kind of like a tome in that respect actually you know yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with the, the evacuation scene um but they they do it so well and it, mm. it it could be bigger it could be grander it could be better but for what they've you know what's available i loved it for what it, it really needed works to well do, it and was I, very good and as you mentioned with what paul you know the lens he went to to, to do some mm. research and the fact that it was a member of the sherwood rangers as well um because you know they landed um just before h hour on d-day didn't they yeah. they were they were yeah. right in the vanguard um so i really liked that inclusion and the mm. and the nice. attempted scale they, they got with the, the like six scene. shermans as well on the show you know even if that's one yeah. of them cgi or whatever but it's nice to see that many <laughs> um and a nice yeah, little look at uh, there's a lovely bit where you where the camera pans up a little bit as mm. if it's like mimicking the buoyancy and the, the, the waves and you see the rest yeah. of the fleet and you see another landing craft tank and a landing craft going in as well it shows the scale very briefly but it shows the scale and it's just enough and i really like that i just wish we um, had a british a film full, a full movie of it yeah d-day yeah but that'd be great but yeah but anyway there, there's and there's one line that we wanted to say and this is a bit of a spoiler but it's kane and if it's it's one of Kane's last lines. It's so well delivered. Um, there's a sequence near the end of the film where the um, Hellman veteran um, who'd been drinking... Scott comes Scott, and apologises for, for yeah, drinking. and says, look, you're a big inspiration to me. Yada, yada. And Bernie says, look, I don't want you. You know, I don't want your praise. I don't want your, your praise. I, I, I want you to get better and, and get some help because right now you're a fucking mess. Yeah. Um, and the way that Kane delivers that Oh, it's just fantastic. You Brilliant. have to see that see- scene to, to, to really, and I'm not doing it justice, um, but it's fantastic. So that was our thoughts on The Great Escaper. It's out on October 6th. Uh, thanks again to British Pathé. Uh, sorry, that's old. Thanks again to Pathé UK um, for sending the screener to us. Um, we really appreciate it. And do check it out when it's in cinemas. And uh, join us again next week for another war movie review. Catch you again. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye-bye.